Well, good morning, y'all. Welcome to A Moment in the Word with Pastor Philbert Candelaria. Man, I pray that you woke up this morning excited for another day. You know, I know that I am. I know that I get so much excitement and I get filled with the Spirit of God when I have an opportunity just to let God know how much He loves you. Well, you know, this morning I hear from a lot of people um, that talk about temptation. You know, why am I being tempted or the temptation is strong and you know, I can't bear it anymore. And it's okay to say those things, but it's not okay to stay in those things. And the reason why I want to bring this up, I labeled this podcast, um, No Temptation Has Overtaken You, because if you truly believe in the words of Jesus Christ and what he has promised us, then you yourself will know that he never will give you more than you can withstand. Let's read what the apostle Paul talked about this morning, and I love how encouraging he is, you know, how he um, continues to empower and to encourage the church, and he's just a mighty man of God after, you know, after himself. I love it, and I love how we need more people like him to encourage. So 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says, no temptation. Make that personal. No temptation. And this is God speaking to you has overtaken you except what is common to mankind, and God is faithful. I love that. God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, there here comes a part. He never says you won't be, but when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. Man, this scripture here that I'm reading to you, you know, it means strength. Strength during the trials of temptations that we will face. You know, the strength that God has for you. I like to put it this way. There's all kinds of bottles on the bookshelves. And each one of them is labeled. One is labeled anger. The other one is labeled, um, you know, um, anxiety. The other one is labeled fear. So you go to that bottle, you know, when you're being tempted by these things. And when you open it up, what comes out of it? No magic genie will come out of it. The word of God comes out of that bottle. And I love this so, so, so much because he says that he will give you strength with the capital H, which means God will give you strength over any temptation. And it goes, it gets a little bit better because you know what? He gives you the strength that he can resist it, that you can resist whatever temptation is being thrown at you or throwing your way or whatever is coming against the child of the most high God. See, many people misinterpret this verse to mean that God will not let bad things happen in your life that you cannot handle. No, you know what? It does. It contradicts Paul's later writing where he said, we will experience hardship when he was in Asia Minor, you know, under great pressure, far beyond our ability to endure it. You know, it's far beyond our ability to do, endure it, but God will allow it. And why will God allow these things? Because he wants you to step out in faith. He wants you to begin to trust in him. Because when you can't endure him, and it's overpowering you, God can. And that's when you go, you know, this coffee cup here. I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. You know, that's exactly what it's all about. God needs to begin to strengthen us. And because he provides that strength, you know, God will give us a way out of every situation. You know, 2 Corinthians, um, read it. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 8 and 9. God allowed Paul and he will allow us to experience difficulties this morning. But not much more that will overtake us. You know, God says that, you know what, do not lean on your own understanding, but to lean on the strength of God. We cannot rely on ourselves this morning because we are facing an enemy who is smarter than us, who knows more scripture than us, who knows our weaknesses. And why? Because he studies us. He studies us and he sees what we fail at. He sees what we're not willing to surrender to God. He sees that we're not willing to present these failures or, or these um, temptations to God. So what does he do? Like an animal, a prey, a predator who smells blood. He knows that the, the animal is weakened, so he comes after it. But you know what? We're not weak in this morning because we are strong. Because the Apostle Paul said here, no temptation. Listen, if temptation is overtaking you here this morning, there is no temptation, trial, or burden you have to face 
that should lead you to abandon your faith and commit sin. No, there should be no temptation, you know, whether it's bills, finances, it doesn't matter. Because he goes on to say, except what is common to mankind, which means there are many things that are common to us. You know, sexual immorality, you know, um, lying, cheating, you know, um, angry, getting angry, you know, going to bed at night with, with hatred in your heart. But see, we face these temptations because they're common to man. And because we face them, we don't ever succeed in overcoming them. But we're not to face these temptations. When they rear their ugly head, we are to come in the presence of God and cry out. Listen, I mean cry out. Like say, Lord Jesus, I need you. And it's like God sends his angelic army to your rescue. You know, one army, once one angel took out 300,000 men. Can you imagine when he sends his army on your behalf? That every demon in hell, the one third of them that have fallen because of their sin, has to run and flee because they know that the king of all kings is coming down in a chariot. And why is he coming down? To give you the strength and to rescue you. And it goes on to say, God is faithful. Do you truly believe that he is faithful? Because if you do, I'm going to challenge you to do something. As you read your word, you break bread. Be still. You know, you read it, you examine the word, you apply it, and then you devote yourself to, to prayer. So I'm going to ask you that question again. Do you, I'm speaking to you, do you believe that God is faithful? And if you do believe that God is faithful, listen to me, then start acting like he is. You know, this a moment in the word here that we have here, the shirt that you see me wearing, the coffee cup that's in front of me. You know why we started this? Because we wanted to touch one person at one time to give hope and encouragement. Because we understand in Deuteronomy, write these scriptures down, chapter 7, verse 9 and 10, Numbers 23, verse 18 and 19, God keeps his promise. You know, Satan's very deceitful, but God will be by your side regardless of the trouble that we face or we have. Because God does not lie. He keeps his promises. And the moment of the word got started because somebody says, you know what? I'm going to do this. It's not about my time. It's not about, you know, having to come on every day. I'm like, Lord, I'm going to be faithful in this. And I'm going to be faithful till you bring me soldiers. And I mean soldiers, warriors. You know, it's like a, a worship team. Listen to me. And I said this before. You probably heard it. It's like a worship team. When the worship team comes out, it's like the Navy, God's Navy coming out. And it's not any other ship that the enemy fears, but the war ship that he fears. Because the war ship is like a battleship. It's got every gun, every tool. It's got everything to be, to be able to protect itself. But we're much better than a battleship. Because we got the word of God to protect us, to cover us, and to lead us. Listen, people, it's time to get excited. Because when we started here... We were faithful in the little and God gave us the bigger and the bigger. And he brought soldiers like you to the forefront. And you're not looking to your right or to your left. Because when you look to your right or to your left, you take that fatal blow. You're looking at the enemy in the eyes. And what are we telling him? You know what? There is no temptation that over can overcome a child of the most high God. And we look at the enemy in the eyes and we say, you know what, enemy? You have been defeated for my, my God is faithful. And then he will not let you be tempted. Those are the four points. I'll go back over them for you real quick if you're taking notes. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. See, God knows the capacity of his children and how hard it is to deal with temptation. But he'll protect us from those temptations. When they become too much for us to handle, he will protect us. From those temptations and then number five good one but when you are tempted he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it what does that mean i'm glad you asked that question god gives you strength to bear and not to succumb to these temptations or not to give in to your sinful urges if you fail you fall into sin we don't fail because we are more than conquerors we will repent 
so that God will restore our relationship with him. And we do not practice any idolatry, nor will we come in the presence of another person and, and give them our burdens and our sins and, and tell them what we're showing. No. You know what? We come into our most quiet place as a scripture that I sent out to all of you all this morning. You know, we give. And if you don't have that, if you're new to A Moment of the Word, you can find it on A Moment in the Word Facebook. You can find it on Threads. You can find the prayer that I send out on um, Instagram. You'll find them. If you need it, you shall seek it and you shall find it. Let me give you the five points. Breaking down the key parts of 1 Corinthians 10, 13. Number one, no temptation has overtaken you. Number two, accept what is common to mankind. And number three, God is faithful. Number four, he will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. And then the one that seals the deal, when you are tempted, he will provide a way out for you to endure it. I hope this helps somebody. Because as I close in prayer, I want to share this with you. And I'm going to read this to you. And I'm going to go over this. You're going to get so tired of hearing this that eventually you'll it'll come natural to you. And this is how you will open up. And this is how you will break bread. Let's be still for a second before we read it. Yes, Lord, we are still in your presence. We are in our secret, most hiding place, Father God. Now, as we read the word, we read 1 Corinthians 10, 13. No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. So we've read that scripture and that comes from the Apostle Paul talking to the Corinthian church. Now we've already examined it. We went through it. We gave some key points in it. Now what we have to ask is, Lord... How do I apply this to my walk? And how you apply that church is that when these temptations come your way, you remember this scripture that the Apostle Paul gave to the Corinthian church, letting you know that no temptation can overtake you. The only way that it can overtake you is if you allow it. And then as we close, we will devote ourselves to what we have read. Because my prayer for you here at A Moment in the Word is that you memorize these scriptures that we go over. Because someday, when you walk into the workplace and you have that one particular person that is in your face telling you things because they want you to react in a negative way because they want to be able to go and report you. Or whatever the situation is, you walk into church and you have that one person that antagonizes you because they want to be able to go back and say, see... They're not a Christian. They got angry at me. They lost their testimony. You can say, God, I pray and I pray 1 Corinthians 10, 13, that I know that this person, this temptation shall not overtake me, Father God, because you have given me the strength. So, Lord, as we enter your presence this day, Father God, as we get ready, Father God, to hit the highways and byways, Lord, whether we don't even leave our home, Father God, we have time to cry out the name of Jesus over our family, over our friends, over our church, over our pastors. We cry out the blood of Jesus that it covers, Father God. It covers the multitude of sins, Lord. And right now, Father God, I'm making this personal, Lord, that you reach, you dig, you search so deep within my bowels, Father God, that you look for anything that is not honorable to you, Lord. You look for the dark spots, Lord. As, as an MRI or, or an x-ray machine, they go in and they examine the internal parts of our body and they're searching for any dark spots because those dark spots mean danger. They're cancerous. So, Lord, I pray right now, Father God, if there be anyone sick in body, Lord, that we raise a flag, Father God, the flag of a righteous king, the flag of victory, Father God, victory, Father God, and Lord, I pray right now that if there any be anyone devising a plan against a child of the Most High God, Lord, that you, Holy Spirit, you shut the mouths and you deal with them. You bring them to repentance and you bring them to their knee, Father God. For every time that they want to proceed out of their mouth, Father God, your name, Lord, or, or the name of your child, Father God, that they shall be condemned for every tongue that rises up shall be condemned in the name of Jesus. So this prayer is for me and for you. 
We here at A Moment in the Word, we love you. And you know what? I'm going to ask you to do something that is going to be probably out of your norm. But it's going to help you. It's going to grow you. I ask you to join us this Friday, 7 p.m. Central Time. Um, Zoom, it's on our page. It's on our Facebook page. It's at a moment uh, in the word.org. Go to events and you'll see the link to Zoom. We have a speaker, a really good speaker this Friday. And our Bible studies consist of this. It's not about just a person that's a talking head. It's about going over the word and getting us involved, whether you want to or not. You know, we won't force you, but we ask questions. You know, we, we share testimonies and we break bread together. So it's this Friday. If you've never done it, try it. And if you don't come back, then that's okay. At least you tried it. But this Friday, Saturday at 7 p.m., Zoom. We have a link for you. God bless you. We love you. And remember, here at A Moment in the Word, we ask that you be intentional in all that you say and all that you do.